This is episode 64 of Puck Pod by Blue Sports. I almost said 65 because we had that little debate before we started. Christian, Dave, how was your week? Hectic. <laughs> I'm honestly I'm trying to remember anything that was like a, a highlight of my week. I don't know. I got nothing, to be cool. honest. <laughs> We're, well, it's going to be the, the same consistent storyline from this pod over the next year will be school from the three of us. Like, I think that's going to be a given. If we forget. Up until, up until May. Yeah. Well, you guys uh, yeah. Have to we'll be in up we'll until be in December. Like, Actually, no, right sorry. Through. Like October, like, I think for us. Man, maybe even November. Yeah. I'll be honest. It could like, yeah, just like consistent school. Like if we don't forget school, that's going to be the the immediate you know the filler right there so dave uh, we did actually have something because it was on my desk here so me, me and dave got our first ever really? press passes man oh yeah we got press I passes see. now I see. first first ever oh it's a terrible photo it's terrible like i look like i'm i'm ready to pass out because i was ready to pass out that day but anyways yeah, we got man, press man. passes man um yeah me, me and dave will be at like uh yeah there's dave's there it is mr david leo uh yeah so that's that was pretty cool actually i just remember that because it was right here um yep. yeah well, me and dave will be at a marley's game not i mean yeah we're, we're covering it but we're like we're also technically getting, like, tested on our covering yeah. of it so mm-hmm. that'll be cool though so yeah that's probably our highlight Any, anything like for you brian or is it just... yeah i wrote a paper on um okay on property law oh that <laughs> sounds fantastic i that's Super. that's incredible sounds like a good read <laughs> It, it was pretty bad i can't nice, lie like nice light reading there that was that was a tough write for me but was it yeah anyway um let's talk about something else like let's talk about what happened last night at the end of the hockey night in canada which hockey night in canada leaked in on Google tv um uh, morgan riley sees riley was it riley grieg ridley yeah. grieg ridley grieg slammed the puck into the empty net and he kind of just went after him did you guys see that live yeah of course of course yeah like just to draw the play up for anyone who didn't see it um leaves her leaves her in the the send zone trying to score a goal to tie the game up at, at four or at fours um puck squeaks out really greg's got a breakaway for an empty netter and like brian said he slams it slap shot into the net Hard, hardest slapper you could possibly give like not just not just going through the motions and he's like five feet from the net he's like in the slot uh i had never seen that before i can't recall seeing that in any game um and like i knew that i was justified in feeling like that's not the right thing to do because it was just like instinctively my body like i got like the heebie-jeebies feeling he raised his stick and i was like what oh, are you doing? Yeah. Like it just did. It did not feel right. And then obviously Morgan didn't think it felt right either because yeah, he he followed him after the celly and uh, he sucker punched him. Not sucker, sucker cross checked him in yeah. the face. That's the gist of it. They were like, what were your first thoughts seeing that? Um. Well, obviously, we could we could touch on the fact that, like in any sport, there there definitely seems to be like. The unwritten rules, right? Code. We yep. we could go through baseball has the or they have had the don't stare at your home run, you know. It, you it used to be you it. couldn't bat flip. Like it, you yeah. used to not be able to bat flip. And, like uh, unwritten uh, rule. Unwritten rule was. was was like literally showing almost no emotion. Like maybe yeah. maybe a cheer if if you're if you're on the base it's a pass. Big deal. Yeah, but very, very rare. And, it, and sometimes those got you plunked, right, by, by the pitcher. Yeah. The next batter goes up, you get plunked. Uh, we could go – there's examples in all sports, and hockey is no exception, right? Rule is you, it's an open net, just kind of like tuck it home, wrap it up. Does Does this not look to you like – a high charge moment. I didn't even think that the, that the game yesterday was that highly contested either. Like I've seen yeah. it battle of Ontario games over the past couple of years. I don't think this one had all the makings of a game where, you know, where one team needed to like, just put the exclamation mark on it. 
I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that there's a right way or a wrong way to score an empty net goal because at the end of the day, there isn't. Simple as that. There's no wrong way to score a goal in the NHL. Well, I mean, there is, but that's for a different story. <laughs> Bear with me here. Obviously, I think we can agree that Ridley Gregg knew what he was doing, right? It was a game against the Leafs on Hockey Night in Canada, regular season game, whatever, but it's still against one of your local rivals and on Hockey Night in Canada, there's a lot of eyes on you. Does he do that if that's game 50 against the San Jose Sharks? I don't know. I'm not at liberty to say what, what's going through Ridley Gregg's head. For Morgan they, Riley, what's up? There seems to be like a code of conduct, but for the Senators, sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic, getting a huge two points, a huge win yes. over a divisional rival. Doesn't that no, warrant a little bit of celebration? Your 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 point is valid, Brian. I, I That's not, that I, wasn't a celebration, like slap shot and goal into an empty net. That's before a celebration. I don't or, think or that's a bit of relief. I don't think that's more celebration as that's as much of my my team, my home barn is half filled with this other team's fans because we're down in the dumps right now, right? Let's let's make no secret about it. The Ottawa Senators fans don't show up anymore because the team's piss poor, right? When the Leafs come into town, there's a lot of Leaf fans that live in that Sens area that want to get tickets because that's the only time that they can go see their team play. Okay? It's a highly con- it's a highly contested moment. Is the action justified though? That is the point of contention Who, here. Whose action? Ridley's or is, is Morgan's? Morgan Riley's action to assault Ridley Gregg, which is what he did, is it justified for the for the action that Ridley Gregg caused? I I will sit here and say it isn't, but I understand why Morgan Riley did what he did. In a split second moment, you have to judge whether that that turns from you're gonna grab a guy's like collar, telling him, "Hey, what are you doing?" or you are going to choose to assault him you're going to hit him with your stick in his mouth right it's a split second split second moment brian you're the neutral here so i want to hear i want to hear your opinion before i i give mine like what what did you see as as a neutral and what side are you on if, if any side at all i i'm indifferent i i understand that like slap shying into an empty net with you know the game's wrapped up is could be deemed as a little bit disrespectful and i can see why Riley didn't want to take that disrespect out, wanted to take it out on the guy that did such action. And like, it's hockey. It's at the end of the day, it's also game 50 of the regular season. So it's whatever. And Riley will be punished. I suspension talk isn't out yet, Yeah, but it's going to happen. I would, yeah. I would bet on it. Don't bet on it, but you know, <laughs> I I'm in agreement on that. I do think he'll get suspended. Um, as much as I thought Ridley Griggs actions were dumb. Slap shot into an empty net is pretty dumb as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, I've never seen that before. And let's remember, empty net goals are scored in playoffs, in series clinchers, in Stanley Cup finals. And I have not seen In cup seen clinchers that. as well. In cup clinchers. So yeah. if those haven't called for a slap shot empty netter, I definitely don't think it's um, valid in game 51 or whatever it is between the Ottawa Senators and Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't. But So I but think I'm that also, was dumb. I also find it kind of interesting how like something so small like this could spark such conversation across the whole league. Yes. Like, yeah, no, it's it's all it's also a product of the teams involved, right? That is, yeah. that is what it is because I think this still could happen in like an Anaheim versus Arizona game. But it's just not getting, like you said, the conversation out of it. That's anyway, the difference. Um, that's I just want to give my thoughts on the Riley part of this. Um, I, I think he stooped down to Ridley Grieg's level. I think Ridley Grieg did something dumb, but Morgan Riley also did something dumb. I think he could have took the high road, and the high road doesn't mean nothing. The high road means a chirp and a collar grab, like Dave said. Yeah. Um, I don't know if his intent was to cross-check him in the face, 
But if it was, then forget about stooping to grade Dude, level. You're of, stooping even below. Sorry, Christian. At the end of the day, intent or not, the action is what prevailed, right? Like that. That is what happened. If his yeah, intent I think was it's two to guys call, whose emotions got the best of them, right? Yeah, that's 100%. that's what it was there. And yeah. I think, yeah, like I, I think Jen Botterill on the panel said it really well. Um, she liked what Riley was going for up until he cross checked him in the face. Um, it was right for, for Riley to go and tell really Grieg something and to try and scruff it up. He just went about it the wrong way. That's it. Uh, one last That's- point to this conversation. If you go online and you go to some of the some of the people that you follow online and you look look for their advice, check who you follow, right? If you go to a lot of the ex NHLers, a lot of them have been, are saying the same thing in a, in a roundabout way, where they under they they side with Riley a little bit more because they've played the game. They understand what it's like to get in the heat of those moments, right? Most rational people, most people who aren't professional athletes and haven't played in the NHL, tend to agree that. While Ridley Gregg is, you know, can be partially to blame here for inciting the action, Morgan Riley's actions prevail over everything and and he's still in the wrong. I don't know who's right. I obviously Morgan Riley is in the wrong. There is some partial blame to Ridley Gregg, but it's just funny how one set of people are saying one thing and it like the other set of people are kind of like saying different. You know what I mean? Okay. We'll, we'll see let's, how it unfolds. Let's quick, quick, Christian, quickly give me the number of games that you're expecting for the suspension. Uh, I, I, like I'll, I'm just going three. Like I don't really have any type of justification. I'll just go three. Dave? I say say two just because uh, Austin Matthews on Rasmus Dowling. It's a good. Call. I'm gonna I'm gonna say two. I have no rationale. I just don't think it warrants much more than that. Okay, uh, let's move to our next topic. Uh, Mikhail Sergachev is now injured. Again. He is uh, very injured, if we're being honest here. Um, so if you didn't see, this is uh, Tampa Bay versus the New York Rangers during the week. Um, Lafreniere and Sergachev go into the corner. Uh, Lafreniere is closest to the boards. He gives Sergachev a little bit of a reverse hit. Sergachev falls back on his left leg. Um, however, his skate is still kind of planted on the ice and um, it kind of just is Old. pointing in the opposite direction that it should. Uh, and he, he lands on it. Um, he ends up, I believe, fracturing his tibia and fibula. So bo- both bones in his leg, if I'm pretty sure. I'll find a team update here in a couple two, seconds. Two but... things you definitely don't want to fracture. As coming yeah. from somebody, somebody who had... Uh, a leg break in the family recently yes. those are two parts of your leg where you don't want to break you don't want to break any and part guess of your what? leg they're those the only two, two parts of your leg those are yeah. the only two yeah. parts of Ali. okay at least like other than your 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 femur, your femur. but at least yeah. that, that yeah. part of the leg there's only two bones there so if you break them both you don't got yeah. much to stand on um so yeah the team update from from the lightning after the fact was that uh search have underwent successful surgery the day after to stabilize fractures in both the tibia and fibula of his left leg. Uh, he's expected to return to Tampa and immediately begin a rehab. Timetable for his return has not been established. Safe to say he'll be out for a long while. Might be the entire season. Um, I'll yeah. say when I saw the replay of this injury, the first thing that came to mind um, is an injury on the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, in the series against the Capitals, Brian. Do you remember what injury I'm talking about? I'm pretty sure we were in the same room when we saw this injury. This is game two of, of round one, Caps versus Leafs 2017. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Mr. Roman Polak did a very, oh. very similar thing at the blue line. Um, it's a very similar thing. I, I think it might have been the same injuries as well. Basically, it was... You just have total eversion of your of your foot. Um, other than that, I don't know. Do you guys have anything to say on the actual injury itself? It's, I mean, on the the I I'll say something on the whole play. Like that is as freak of nature as you can get. Sometimes these things happen. It's even more unfortunate for Sergachev, who was returning from long term injury that very night. 
I think that was maybe a couple shifts into ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes of ice time into the game. Okay, so let's say halfway six through the shifts, game. Six shifts through through his you know his comeback, and he basically is out for the rest of the season. How many games has he played this year? Like ten. Because he was up for seven. It's got to be in the before. teens, yeah. So it's got to be in the, in like the probably the teens to early twenties. Um, Nuggets has played thirty four games this season. Thirty okay. four. Look at that. Wow. He, well, he had okay. missed. Um, what was it? He missed seventeen. Well, I guess that does check out because we're, we're yeah. fifty something games in the season, so that like does check out. Forty five. I thought we were like forty still into the season, man. Yeah. Um, I, well, I think the point is though is like we haven't really heard much from him entire season because it wasn't going the best for him, even yeah. when he was healthy. It was a down year, um, but obviously this is this is totally different. Um, Listen, just that, not performing well. That that is a guy who just inked a new deal for him to start out year one. This is year one for his new deal. That is a very very tough way to, you know, to start out your new contract. Now, what he's got to focus on is getting back. It looks like it's going to have to be getting back for the next season. I don't even if even with a deep run. If Tampa makes a deep run this year and they get into the playoffs because they're out of it right now, I think. If they make a run, I, I it's very, very unlikely. I, I see Mikhail Sergachev coming back at all this year. So what he has to focus on right now personally is getting in shape and getting ready for next season and just hoping for the best, basically. Did you guys, did either of you guys read his Instagram post the next day? Yeah, no. so, that it looked like that sounded like somebody who was frustrated, like very, yeah. very frustrated. I'll I'll give it a read really quick. Here is a picture of him um, out on the stretcher, uh, hands on his face, and the caption is, "Oh man, why me? Why now? After all the games missed, coming back and getting injured again feels unfair. Feels terrible. Trying to stay calm and positive, but it's impossible." After doing everything right, I get this. The universe is unpredictable, I guess, and it has its own plans. But fuck the universe, man. I know I'll come back stronger, and I know I'll play better than before. But it's tough right now, and it's going to be tough tomorrow. I think Sergeyev has shown himself to be a guy who shows uh, his heart on his sleeve uh, in the good times and the bad. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is a pretty fresh, refreshing angle on it. Um and I, I say that he shows his heart on his sleeve just because we know how passionate he was about, like, the past two Leafs and Tampa series. He definitely definitely wasn't so happy losing to us and um, definitely had a bone to pick with us. But, yeah, it's it's tough to see anybody go through this. Um, and it's always just tough to see anyone who's a big name in the NHL going to go down. It's never good for the sport. So, yeah, I mean, he's probably not back for the season. But here's hoping all goes well for him not only physically, but mentally after what he's gone through it's, before this injury. We just, all we can really do is just wish him the best. He is a superstar on any other team in the league. He just happens to be on the vault and he's competing with so many other superstars and so many specific Russian stars on that team. Well, yeah. one Russian star. On yeah, at team. least one. Not two. The other... hmm? Pardon me? Two. There's oh. two. Oh, oh that's yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. About him. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move it to the... I did, honest, I forgot about last week. Anyway, let's move it to the next fire. tactic. Uh, Blackhawks, Blues at uh, the next 20... At the 2025 Winter Classic. I swear we've seen this matchup already. This is the first ever repeat matchup in Winter Classic history, fellas. Really? The first mm-hmm. ever. Where, did, so, yeah. did they play at... Did they play at Bush Stadium the last time? Do you, do you guys remember so that that I could not tell you? I'm not yeah, sure if it's if it's also a repeat of the stadium. Like that's I that'd be interesting too. I don't think so. But I think I, there's been a game at Wrigley, Wrigley before. I think well, I think there's been a game at Wrigley. I just don't know if it was with the Blues. I think that's the Hawks have know. to have the the record number of appearances in a Winter Classic. Oh, without a doubt, there's no without way a doubt. that they're not. It's the, it, the meme is was, always that it's them, the Bruins, and the Penguins, right? Yeah, it was it's in one the of, stadium last time. Okay, okay. I, I I do remember I but and it was Hawks Blues as well. Yes. Okay, I uh, I, can't, okay. I vaguely remember the game. Good snipe, but, yeah. Dave. Good snipe. Yeah, the only the only difference is, is that um uh, the Blues hosted at a Bush um yeah. twenty seventeen. Blackhawks will be hosting it in Wrigley Field this time around. Yeah. So. so it's the baseball, the baseball series here. Um okay. How do we feel about this matchup? I think me and Dave, while you were gone, Brian, we talked about this potential matchup. Um, 
it kind of rolled our eyes at Chicago being in it again. But I mean, it's Bedard, right? That's I what think, this yeah. Is about. I think in, as compared to, like, okay, so they hosted in 2017. So this is Blackhawks going on a downward spiral, basically, right? That The last time that those two teams were involved. The Blues were still, they were still, right? Like, they're not riding just as high. A couple of years after, if you remember, they win the Cup. But the Blues were kind of always in, like, that mid tier i think now it's a bit more justified to at least have the chicago blackhawks in there even though i think they're going to be god awful again next year too so the product on the ice is going to be bad don't get me wrong but you you have to get bedard in as early as possible like so i I don't hate it i don't love it though yeah i think that's where i'm at too um I think what I'm I, like I, I'm I like the Blues like I said of all the central teams are the ones that I I like the most, um, but I don't think this was the right time for them to be in the Winter Classic because I think they're about as mid as you can get to be honest. And who's who's on the poster when you're selling this game? It's Bedard on one side, and who are you going with on the Blues on the other side? Like I don't know, it's just like to- Robert Thomas or Robert Jordan Thomas. Cairo, I guess, right? But yeah. I think they could have went more young gun versus young gun. I could have even been sold on like, I don't know, freaking Anaheim, honestly, to be honest. But I, I, I get they're going for the rivalry here. Um, so I, I think the matchup, like you said, don't love it. Don't hate it. And at least for me, I know my mind always goes to potential jerseys. And I really hope they do what I'm thinking they're going to do here. Um, they need to you have baseball? any guesses? So, um, no, no. Uh, I What I want to see is something involving their city flag colors. Uh, Chicago has a really nice city flag. They have this light blue, red, uh, and white look. It's really nice. Uh, St. Louis has a really nice city flag. St. Louis has incorporated those colors into Jersey before. Um, it's blue, yellow, and red. So it's the trumpet jerseys. Um, so we need something involved in that color scheme, if you're asking me. And then I think Chicago really needs to lean in on those city colors because I think they could make a fantastic looking jersey. Um, so I know that's not really like rooted in any type of team history, but listen, after this winter classic between Seattle and Vegas, I think you can you can take all those rules off the table. And I'm really that's what I'm really hoping for from Chicago. Give me a city flag colored Chicago Blackhawks jersey. Dude, I I also don't mind uh cross cross con- like cross multiplying sports. Uh, hit me with a Chicago Cubs inspired Blackhawks jersey. Hit me with some. I know it's kind of similar because I think they have the same colors as the the flag. Right, it's a blue, white, red. It it I'm is, but it. like it's the the city flag is like a light blue. It's, it's like a, a very blue. very pale blue. Okay, they, <clears> so like you could still. I was about to say something like blasphemous. Have we ever had like a freaking pinstripes hockey jersey? But I'm thinking it in my mind and it looks awful. Like that wouldn't work. They could never do that, right? Say, <laughs> is that that's more like the White Sox? No. Yeah, well, yeah, it would be more the White Sox. I think that's just baseball in general, not specific to like a Chicago team. I see. That just popped into my saying. mind. I do agree with you, Dave, though, Dave. I think it'd be easier for St. Louis to come up with something. Um, just because Chicago also has want two teams. Chicago. You don't, don't want, want Chicago to play around too much. Just keep it basic, keep it clean. Like they have amazing <sighs> stuff. They like do. This. They have a fantastic basis to work with. They do. Just a little <sighs> bit. Just a little bit of creativity. Just a little I bit. Think it was, I think it was the reverse retros. I just they, they tried too hard to play around with it and they just those blew are, it. Don't want that again. Yeah. Yeah. Those Especially are Especially because you have it. a real star wearing something this time on yeah. the ice. So many people watch it. Anyway. I think that's good winter classic talk. Let's move into the next thing, which is um, a trade rumor that Christian has that he did not tell us about. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. Okay. So I want to do a little bit more research into this to kind of back up why I think this is really interesting, but I think I'll, I'll be able to get the gist of it for you. Um, so there was a report from the After the Whistle podcast, which is a podcast based out of Buffalo. Um, and they came with some rumors that, the Buffalo Sabres are looking for a number one goaltender, but also that they are shopping Casey Middlestat. 
And to me, that's nice. the most interesting name that is out there. And let me corroborate, not corroborate, because this isn't my reporting, but uh, this conversation was had on 32 Thoughts this week between Merrick and, and Friedman. Um, and Merrick basically said, that makes a lot of sense. And Friedman kind of agreed, that does make a lot of sense. Um, so they could be looking to sell high on Casey Middlestat. This is a guy who is 24th in the league right now in even strength points after he was, I think, second in the league in the second half of last year in even strength points. So he does a lot of his work at 5-on-5, which is where the majority of the game is played. I think this is a guy who could make sense for a lot, a lot of teams. What do you guys think when you hear that Casey Middlestat could be available? Uh, he is a point per game player, right? I think he, if he's not at a point a game, I think he's just under. It's like 40 and 49, maybe. Or 40, 42 and 51. Okay. So he's he, but he's not, he's the leading scorer on the Buffalo Sabres after being the leading scorer. I think actually, no, I don't crazy. think it was leading scorer last year, but he was he was good last year too. That's kind of crazy that of all the talent that's on the, the Sabres roster, not to denigrate Casey Middlestat, but Casey Middlestat's the leading scorer on that roster. That's yeah. that's just a little bit surprising, I would say. Like wh- when you got guys like Tage on the team, Tage Thompson and like yeah. Alex Tuck. Uh, yeah. I mean, just to give listen. a bit more context, too, he had 59 points in 82 games last year. So he's at 42 already. So he's going to blow by that, it looks like. And uh, he was playing 15 minutes and 43 seconds a night last year. That's up to 1830 this season. So he's got, got a lot more trust, right? Yeah. Um, so now the rumor is they want – is does that mean it's a straight swap? One no, for one? no. No, I don't, so listen, I that don't, those are two independent. They're not they're mutually exclusive. Doesn't have to be involved, doesn't doesn't need to be. So the Sabres A are looking for a, a starting goaltender, period. And then next yes. next sentence starts with they are also sh- actively shopping Casey Correct. Middlestad as well. Correct. Okay. Um man, I don't I don't think I've I don't I've never had an opinion on Casey Middlestad, if I'm being completely <laughs> honest with it you. Was, guys. It was tough to have an opinion other than man, he's not as good as his draft pedigree would tell you, other than so last year. Like he, yeah, he broke yeah. out last year, and it was a question of is that an aberration or is that Casey Middlestad going forward? And so far he's showing that he can do this on multiple seasons. Brian, you've been very quiet there. I don't know if you're doing some research or I want you. You're the guy. You're the middle stat guy. At least I think he's middle, the American I, guy. I thought middle stat was going to be great in his draft year, and obviously it hasn't panned out. But he definitely well, he was. Was he? It was. Um, was it him and Zegris that were like lights out at the Road Juniors together that one year? Like the middle was stat was phenomenal. Okay, Turkot. But middle stat at the World Juniors that one year was like really, really yeah. good. Yeah. And. He also has the most embarrassing uh, combine clip ever. Tim and Sam Bennett. I think they did the same thing. They both couldn't do a pull up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was, yeah. They've got that. Yeah. That's a good trivia question. What do Casey Middlestad and Sam Bennett have in common? Yeah. I think Sam Bennett had an injury. I don't know if Casey Middlestad did. So, yeah. But, oh, and but, wasn't but he, will... uh, was he a guy picked out of, was he picked out of high school? I think was Middlestad or I mean, no? I don't remember if I'm being honest. With okay. You, but yeah. Okay. Where I'm going with this is uh with Middlestat. He is currently at RFA on two point five, with a like having a career year. Yeah. I think that Buffalo is making the right choice if they are going to dump him off. If they have to dump him off, I think yeah. this is the time to do it. So in regards one, to the goalie search, yeah, go who are you going to get? Because there's such a shortage right now of goalies of yeah. high echelon starting goalies. Like you can go cheap. We've seen that work. But if they want a, if they want the guy, well, is there even the guy? Like I would say there's not the guy. I think that's a conversation for the off season. So they might that's already why have I the think, guy. Yeah, that's that's my point is like you you let this play out for the rest of the year. You're out of the playoff picture already. I wouldn't be throwing some future assets in for a goalie right now. However, Friedman on 32, uh, not 32 thoughts on Saturday night headlines yesterday did say the Sabres are looking for help for the now. So it didn't specify positions or anything, but what I think we're in line for is a good old fashioned hockey trade is what I think we've got coming our way here involving Casey Middlestat. And I don't know who 
I think they could use help on their blue line because Clifton and Eric Johnson did not work out. And after Matias Samuelson, who's out for the year, they're like number three defenseman after Darlene and Power is Henry Yokoharu. I like Henry Yokoharu. He's not number three defenseman on any yeah. team. Maybe the Chicago Blackhawks, maybe. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think we're in line for like a like a Seth Jones, Ryan Johansson 2.0 kind of trade here. And I'm very curious to see who. I haven't figured out where the match I, is, but that's... Oh, Brian. I found something. Okay. Buffalo sends Casey Middlestat. No. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Did Casey... the trade just happen? No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Oh, I'm just saying. oh okay, okay, okay. I thought you were about to break news right now. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Buffalo sends Casey Middlestat to Nashville for UC Saros, who then calls up Askarov. <laughs> Wow. Uh, wow. Okay, see, okay, but here's my problem with this. It's like, like Dave said, I don't think they need a goalie. Or I don't think they can commit to a Soros while you still have a Levi and while you still don't know exactly what you have in Devin Levi. I think that would be irresponsible. I think that's bad yeah. bro- uh, asset management. I, I Like, you're on the right path there if they, like, maybe they just think what I'm saying is bullshit. Probably do. And maybe they do think that's a good idea. I don't hate it, and I think that's also a Barry Trotz certified move too. So I like it. Could work. Yeah. Does Could does work. Nashville does Nashville need him right now though? Like I think they're I think they're well, a bit more content to lose if I'm if I'm being completely honest with you. They're in, they're in like they're in the thick of the playoff picture. They're obviously they on the are, outs, which like. It just went against – I think it went against everything that I thought that they were doing. Like, I thought they were, like, tearing it down a little bit, trying to, you know, trying to maybe acquire a couple more uh, picks at this deadline. It That doesn't look like what they're doing to me. I think they want to make a push for it. I don't know if they're talented enough to get in, though. I think they could be talented enough to squeak in, but to do any – to make any noise, no. Yeah, yeah, I- no. I also think that, like, if they added a guy like Middlestat down the middle, they would have, they would be pretty decent. To, like, yeah. Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly and Casey Middlestat is your, with, like, that, flanked by, like, awful. Philip Forsberg. You also does that remember, come, like, Tommy Novak. They have a lot of young guys. Like, the, does that come at the, range. does that come at the price of UC Saros has been one of the best goaltenders in the league this year, though? I mean, high so scoring. This year he hasn't been. This year has been very not UC Soros. I think he has like a <laughs> nine hundred five. Um, I mean, but like you still, be- I still bet on. UC it's Soros. better than a, it's better yeah. than a lot of a lot of starting. Like, there's a few starting goaltenders in yeah. the league that would kill for a nine hundred five right now. Yes, like he's yeah, been yeah. he's been fine. But it's yeah, it's not uh, it's not his standard of play this yeah. season, but. Yeah, like, I just like, I just thought that was interesting. Th- like um, that's the thing. Like like let's say hypothetically you like you get rid of UC Saros and then you just kind of throw in the unproven pro. Like we've already seen that happen before. Like Dustin Wolf got some leeway in Calgary. Maybe maybe it's apples to uh, apples to oranges here. Maybe Yaroslav uh, Askarov comes in and he is lights out right away. I I I would tend to want to shelter my young prospect of goalie first before i kind of make rash like big decisions like that like joseph wall for as good that as he has played in his limited nhl career still probably needs somebody for the next couple of years beside him as a 1a 1b type of guy if i'm being completely honest i don't think yeah if, if the leafs go into next season and they're running joseph wall and and guy b Basically, I think that's that's gonna be like throwing. Guy Boucher is gonna be the backup goalie. Guy B. Guy B. Reporting it. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean. Uh, It's it's tough. It is. That's a that would be a tough situation. But I think this goes to my point though is why I'm expecting a good old fashioned hockey trade one for one Casey Middlestat for insert 25 year old defenseman here. Like I, I could see what if it's what if it's Middlestat for Hannafin with an extension. Okay. Mm, maybe okay. that's something there. Maybe Middlestat needs an extension too. Then he does. Well, he does need an well, extension. He does. He's an R. He's an RFA after this year. He's Some, coming off of two point five. Something that I that also you should know. If Buffalo is not willing to pay 
Middlestat after they just paid. How many guys have they just paid over the last two off well, So that's the thing, though, is you can't pay everyone. You have to stop somewhere, and this right? is where they decided to stop. Maybe this is the line where they yeah. where they draw the line in the sand. It might yeah. be. It might come at like the most opportune time for them to to sign. If this is Katie, Casey, oh, Middlestat this is great from, timing. Two seasons ago, Casey Middlestat was a thirty point player, right? Yeah, he was not playing too hot. If you sell him now as like just like a 0.85 point per game guy, wow. Um, depending on the return, yeah. I, I think I think honestly it's not the worst decision for Buffalo to make, especially for them not making the playoffs this year. Try to get as much as you can for. Uh, I, I think it's obvious like they need a switch in like their their roster makeup, like yeah. the pieces for whatever reason have not fit this year, and yeah. I, I'm actually very sold on I'm middle intrigued. step for Hannafin. Yeah, I think that could make lots of sense. There's there's definitely something cooking, uh, especially because, like David said, Buffalo extended so many guys in the past couple seasons. Just a matter of what they do now and where they think that they need to fill gaps in their roster. With that being said, let's go on a quick break. Okay, we are back let's get into the capitals we haven't done this in a while but um i don't have too many good things to say because we <laughs> think and uh we probably won't make it to the playoffs i am on the cell train right now the only thing we're watching for at this point was a match can go off feels like gone exactly where i am huh he got a couple. he's gone he's a couple of reasons four, four straight games good but um we we are at, at a point where i was last year just with less hype because last year, obviously, the prospect pool was that much better. Um, I just have a question for you guys. Wait, how much would you pay for a guy with 24 points in 46 games, 16 goals, second line right winger? I know, I know who this is, Brian. You can't put this past me. I know who this is. I'm not paying crap for him personally for my team, but somebody might. It's Anthony Mantha. Yeah. And he is yeah. he has rejuvenated his career this season. Um, prior to this season, he did say he wanted to have a big year. And he's having the best year he's had with us. And probably since the Detroit days, or even his yeah. middle of Detroit days. And in and, and all seriousness, I think we can get something back from him. It'll be interesting to see what though. Because this could be a one time thing that he's a gamer, that he's popping off this one year, but how about yeah. uh, how about the Knicks? How about Nicky Dowd and Nick Jensen? How about those guys? I think you were the one. Who, was it you who put in our chat that they are out there? They are out there, but I wanted to get Dowd a little bit later because I heard the asking okay. price. And oh uh, my god, Uh-oh. yeah, yeah, it's Jensen, for a fourth Jensen line center. Fourth we'll get to it. We'll get to it. They will get to it. This is not just your average fourth line center. Anyway, yeah. Um, Going back to Manta, I think that somebody will pay. I'm expecting the return of like a second or a third, something very minimal. I think I'll, go I'll say second. I'll say a fourth. I say if you get a fourth, you're you're happy. If you could get a second out of him, <laughs> he makes too much. He makes too much. And we have well, we have all retention spots. If we're not going to make the playoffs, we just take the hit yeah, and get the higher them. pick. We get paid yeah. for it. It's, also, if you guys use retention, then I'll say a third, but I'm not saying more than a third for him. Ah, that book market. You could, ask, you could ask for a second. Sure. I, I don't I'm know asking if you're for, gonna, I'm, I'm asking for a Lambert David. But... <laughs> yeah. Might get a T1. Okay. <laughs> one guy that I, uh, that, like Chris mentioned, I think should probably be moving is Nick Jensen. There is a huge shortage of right shot defensemen that can skate in the NHL. Jensen is one of those guys. He has both skills. I think we could get something back from him. I'm not too sure what. Like I said, we have a, both retention slots, so we can get him down to two. I think a lot of teams would be I'd be very him. surprised. Well, I would, I'd be very interested at $2 million, but he's got three years on his deal. Does he? Did he get extended? He just signed an extension. Him. Remember him and TVR both signed extensions well, at the deadline together. last year? Yes. And you know, how, you know how old Nick Jensen is? Because I know how old he is, and I'm not a fan. He's over 30. He's 33. Uh, He's 33. And for three seasons, I don't know if I want Nick Jensen 36 years old, honestly. 
I looked into it because I was curious for the Leafs, but I'm no I longer curious for the Leafs. I could yeah, so he's got four mil times three. I oh, don't know how I feel that. about that. <laughs> but listen, listen, I think he'll be on the market. I think a team could be interested. I don't know if you guys will retain on that. I no, don't know how much not. you'd get back on that. I could see a fifth I back. Know what I don't know. Yeah, once again, no, but I, I think once again, I think I could see like a third. That's that's my my asset of the day, guys. A third round pick. Another Ooh. guy that is apparently up, and I wanted him last year so bad. Now that I got him, I think he's kind of not the best. Is Joel Edmondson? He's apparently on the on the trade block as well. We're not getting anything back for this guy. That's a that's, I, a, that's yeah. a Joel Edmondson for a six. That's if I've ever seen. Put, one. Yeah, yeah. Put it to you this way: like, uh, I don't even have thoughts on Joel Edmondson because I saw him on the roster and I didn't even like consider him. I'm like, I'm, I'm not trading for him. No thanks. Okay, before you get to doubt, do you have another name before doubt? No. Okay, Max Patch ready? What I, happens with him? I don't think that we will probably dump him off. Do you I mean, think you might like try and resign him? Do you think he doesn't want to get traded? What's the for me? I think that's not good enough. Not good. I think that Pacioretty, uh, we probably need a guy with that level of offense. Like, we have a huge shortage of firepower on this team. So I would rather keep the relationship him, going. Yeah, I would ask him, okay. Do you want to resign? Do you want to resign for 2.53? Just okay, like we, like, we have good relations with you. We, we signed you, we expect him to be to come in later. You rehabbed um, him correctly. Yeah. Which I oh, think you, for him is probably really big. You built you built the relationship and trust with him, and it would be kind of disingenuous if you just kind of like threw that all away right okay. now. That if if he signs another one year deal though, and he's able to be healthy through the rest of the season going into next season, does he become a trade deadline target? All depending depends on, on the caps his style are, of play, right? right? I think it just I depends think... on where the caps are in the standings. If they're going for it next year, then you keep them. If if it's another and, mid year, and if they're good. going, if they're going for it, does he not? Is he not a part of those plans? Right? Like, yeah. He, yeah. He looks to probably be a part of those plans okay. if that's the case. There's probably you guys more... have talked me out of it. Yeah, there's probably more help in just keeping him around than there is selling him off for. Um, what could just be a menial asset, basically. It probably would be, yeah. Okay, get get to the superstar. Yeah. Nick Dowd is going to fetch a first-round pick. This. Holy I cannot hell. believe this crap. I cannot believe this crap. And it's like, once again, like Elliot and Merrick, they basically insinuated that on 32 Thoughts. They're like, he's going to get paid. And I know, you know, it was actually, it was Merrick who was just like, Oh yeah, can we talk about how much Nick Dowd's gonna get traded for? And then Elliot kind of just brushed it off. They didn't really go into it, but are, is he Tanner Janot, Brian? Is that what you're saying, <laughs> he, man? He uh, is better than Tanner Janot. I agree. I agree. I, I I also that... agree. I think we could also agree that even at the time of the trade, Tanner Janot, like that was an overpayment from Tampa. Regardless, oh right? my god! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me slow you on him. Go. You got two years on a guy controlled 1.3 million who might be the best fourth line center in the league. The same way that people looked at Hathaway is the same way that we still look at Dowd. They come one and two. They're the exact same. Dowd has like the playoff pedigree that you want in your player. When the team yep. was dying last year, he was one of the standout points. This <sighs> Dowd is also. He has 13 points in 41 games, which isn't a lot, but given his defensive role as a fourth line center, it's a lot. It's probably a career year for this guy. Um, <laughs> Brian's not going to like me saying this. Um, he's. I, I would say Nick Dowd is is a good David Camp for half the price. Okay, that's what I. That's what that's Nick fair. Dowd is. Yeah, I fair. think he's a. I think. David Kampf up until this year, because he's been not my boy David Kampf this year, hasn't been as good, and you're paying 2.4 for him now. Um, but on his previous deal, I would have told you David Kampf is up there with some of the best fourth line centers in the league. He has like a 55% face off rate. He's he penalty kills. Um, his advanced numbers aren't bad. He can he can uh, shut down other teams like secondary matchups. I would have told you he's great. He's fantastic. Uh, and that's just Nick Dowd now. Nick Dowd is on 1.3 million for two years, like you said, and he just does all of those things. 
and he's right handed, which is good too. Um, I'm not paying a first for a good David Camp as much as I like David Camp. That's all. Is there could I see teams. could I see some team doing it? Yes, yes. There are is it teams. Yeah, is sorry, it Dave. fair? Yeah, no. Like, is it fair to say like we just don't put enough emphasis on that defense first mentality? Uh, like his counting stats are not great. He doesn't have the offensive upside, like you said, a a good better David Camp. <sighs> It's so tough to quant to quantify what defense first type players bring to your team. Like I I there probably is a market for a first round pick, but is it is he worth a first round pick? Is my is what I'm trying to get at. How can you I quanti- think how can you quantify yeah. what what his defensive metrics bring to the brings to the team? I think when you're trading somebody or when you're trading for someone and you're sending out a first round pick. It has to be someone who's either a top of the line offensive producer or top of the line defensive player. And I think Dowd is a secondary defensive player. I'm not putting Dowd in my matchup against the team, the other team's best player. I'm putting Dowd in the matchup against the team's second best player. Second best player, I would trade a second for Nick Dowd. That's what I would do. That's how I'm looking at it, right? It's just a matter of ice time. It's a matter of just role. I think he can be great defensively, and the numbers can look fantastic. But if they're against secondary competition, I can't pay a top of the line price for him. Does right? does that does paying the the first rounder does it count if you are a team like? Hypothetically, let's say like the Colorado Avalanche, who could that's go, exactly where I don't know why that's exactly what I was gonna say too. Uh who yeah. could that could be that could be anywhere from like you know whatever, yeah. like a, a mid first round pick to the 32nd overall pick in I a think draft it's, that's a it's, bit weaker. It's gonna be 20 or lower for the abs, right? So I think them I could totally see doing it. If you're the Leafs, like you're not you're not even considering that, right? Yeah, probably not. I, th- so I think I think there are I think there are teams where Maybe you just have to bite the bullet to get somebody like that to come in. Yeah. Especially if you're you're looking like if that's if that turns out to be the the twenty eighth to thirty second overall pick that you just yeah. give gave away. What is the difference between twenty and sixty in this draft? It's, I'm I'm not yeah. sure. If apparently, get apparently get this first, draft isn't the best either. So it's not good. If we after get, twenty, if, apparently, if we get a pick though, I can almost guarantee we're gonna flip it. Yeah, we're gonna do exactly well, especially as, especially if it's like in the twenty five to thirty something range. If it's a first rounder, I think it's just better to acquire. And, and th- at this rate, it's easier to just get more in, uh, like just flip it, get a couple like uh, second and a third, than it is I, to just pick one. In yeah. with, in with respect to Dallas specifically, I found three teams where I think he would make a perfect fit. I want your review. Okay, go first on. one, I think it's a give me. I think the Boston Bruins would be willing to pay. The the Boston Bruins are are gonna be in for anybody Every and everybody. Team. Yeah, they don't but have a first this year. They don't have a first this year, but they have one twenty twenty six. So okay. the second the second team I brought up was Vancouver. Okay, do you know who the fourth line center is? We know um, Vancouver. Yeah, it's like Neil Zaman. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think Dowd is a huge upgrade over Neil Zaman. Yeah, it, uh, another team, team though that doesn't have a first round pick. Vancouver doesn't. Do they not? Okay, well, they have. They probably have the twenty twenty five. They all. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're in, ter- in terms of need. I think. Yeah. Sure. In ter- sorry. In terms of uh, fit. Sure. Uh, I don't know if they have anything to get it done. Maybe they have to go future future. But it's also tough trading away assets that are like two years away. You know what I mean? Like if you're trading for sell, next year's if draft. You, if you think you're the team, you can make that move. Okay. Third team I've, I've sniped out is the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, I think that's my answer too. I think we're I think we have a consensus on Colorado being a team that makes sense. It just seems like a Colorado move. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um. Can, can we talk about um, Ovechkin breaking Gretzky's goal record this week? The empty net goal record. 
The empty net goal record has been broken, ladies and gentlemen. Ovechkin has passed Wayne Gretzky for the all-time lead in empty net goals with number 57. Brian Heisefield to be part of this historic moment to witness this. Come on. <laughs> nothing. I mean, they, nothing. They, they count. That's empty net goals. Yeah. Yeah. They all count. One yeah. On the stat sheet. yeah. So yeah. that's my take on that. I I'll just wanted saving, to bring it up. I'll be saving my joy for the, the last like the big one, uh, 895. I think that's the number off the top of my oh, head. Oh, sorry. That wasn't the Gretzky goal record you guys were going for? Ah, <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Oh, what's the one that he is going for? I I, I, I forget. Goals, I goals against. The goals against. Goals against. <laughs> I hope not the goals against. Well, we might break that one as well. Anyway, uh, I also just want to say, I'm getting to that stuff has uh, entered the player yes. Yes. program. Um, wish him the best, and hopefully things work out for him. Yeah. yeah, not too much detail on that one there. So hopefully Kuzi oh, comes up better on the other side. There's been a few recently where, where we've just heard that they've admitted been admitted to the program yeah. and haven't heard much else. I again I don't know. I'll say this anytime this this comes up. I don't know if we deserve any um context or or reasoning why until if unless they're they want to share their stories. Yeah. Uh, Which was the case with like Sam Gerard, right? Like that yes, was a hundred percent. Yeah, there's been a few recently like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's clearly seems to be, um, at least in in the inner NHL circles, there seems to be a more a willingness to to admit yourself into the program that yeah. maybe maybe a few years ago and in different different paths just wouldn't have happened. So. If this is well, going to be what it takes for for players like Kuznetsov and other guys to get the help that they deserve, I'm all for it. Well yes, said, sir. Dave. And uh, just going to the Leafs brief, uh, I also just wanted to ask: Did Ryan Reeves play last night? Yeah, he did. He did. And why didn't he get involved with? Uh, was the Riley thing happened with five seconds left, and yeah, he didn't want to pull a David Clarkson and get suspended for ten games by jumping off the bench. Yeah. So you got, okay. yeah, you got you got to remember like um, empty net situation. So it was like the Leafs' five best players on the ice, right? Their yeah. six best oh, players. Right. So, so then, Brian, to put it into context, there was five seconds left, and guess who comes over the board for the final face off of the game? Ryan, Ryan Reeves, right? So yeah. he's Anything on the ice. Happened? There was a lot of jawing, and there was I think there was a couple actually. There was there not a after whistle after like the game scrum, or am I misremembering <laughs> things? I don't remember. I think I was honestly too deep into my phone trying to argue with people. <laughs> I want to say happened. I want to <laughs> say there was a scrum after the game was over, but yeah, I could okay. be wrong. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, listen, you threw they threw him over the board to to intimidate and and do whatever. But at the end of the day, we all knew that there was. We as much as we wanted to see a fight, there just wasn't going to be a fight happening. Like everybody knew, the refs were put a quick, t- quick stop to everything. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to um, the Leafs? Yeah, Bri- Brian. Let's let me hit you with this one first because this is you. Okay. Do you have anything to say on JT versus the CRA? And if you don't, we can just skip it because I've got nothing. Dave, do you have anything? I, it's just I, weird. I, I mean, maybe it's just just to know. I don't know if he, Brian even heard the story. Brian might actually find this. Yeah, interesting did you that hear maybe it? we? Yeah, find it. Okay, I don't know anything will happen. Okay, if you want to look into it while I fill a bus with Dave for a second, just like briefly, just look up JT CRA and you'll find it instantly. It's a Whoa. national post. It's a national post article. Um. So yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about, with Dave, that's like not as like pressing is the Pierre Engvall tribute that I know a lot of people got up in arms about. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I honestly, I'm so no, numb. I'm so numb to it no, right I, now that I, I literally couldn't give a shit. I really no, don't. I, I know. I know. I just, so you... the thing that I've seen the most is like in comparison to Cal Dubas not getting a, um, yeah. right. It's tough because what are you going to, it's tough because a lot of those just happen to be, uh, like it's like ho- ho- hockey highlights. The best you could do for that is like, what did he do in the community? Basically, well, you, you could have like the the Calder Cup. You could have them winning yeah. rounds. Like listen. you could listen. There, they made excuses to not like it was a petty choice to not 
give Kyle Dubas a tribute, but like I get yeah. I get it after the follow. Uh, and then the other thing I want to bring up in relation to that was Tyler Mott got a video tribute from the New York Rangers after playing 33 games for them across two different seasons. Yeah. Um, that's that's crazy to me, right? That is crazy. Like, did Ryan did Ryan O'Reilly get anything when he came to Toronto? I can't I, even remember. I don't remember. But going on to the Dubas point, did Lou Lamorello get anything the first time he came back? I don't remember. It's a great question, and I don't know the answer because I know Lou didn't give out any during his tenure, like for players yeah. or anyone. No. And I don't know. I don't know if Lou got one. I don't know, and I I guarantee you. He probably, he probably would have they said, probably asked him. Not, probably said, don't no. you dare. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but then maybe that's just something to know. Maybe it's just like, because that's typically really only for, like, I don't know if there's like, maybe if, if Keith gets fired and he comes back, does Sheldon Keith get one of those? Maybe. I think it's, only, I'll be honest. I think it's only Do you think players. Babs would have got one? Like, oh man. I this don't know. This is the know. question, right? I don't I know. Do, yeah. I think it's, I think it's strictly for players. I, uh, the end of the day, Pat- Patrick Waugh got one, and again, he's like a he's an all time player. But like, did Montreal have a reason to give Patrick Waugh a standing O? What's uh, yeah. the reason? I've won them a cup. <laughs> I don't know, but like, this isn't the first time Patrick Waugh has been back in Montreal since. Oh, I cup. see what you you're saying. I, mean? I see like, what he's, you're saying. Like, as like he's, coach? he's coached in the NHL. He's just back after a while. Like. There's no like specific I think, reason. I think that's I think just Montreal a, being Montreal. I think there's a difference though between Patrick Waugh and Pierre Engvall. I think that's that's okay. The yes, yes, thing, yes, right. No, hundred percent. I think they're, Montreal for whatever reason they love their standing O's so much. Like if there's, if outside of like winning the most Stanley Cups in the NHL, they also have the most standing O's for sixty. Okay, they I just think, do. I think we could agree that there's just a gray area between like what sure. differentiates there's no hard and fast throws <sighs> like what <laughs> differentiates <laughs> pierring ball sorry sorry bro <laughs> yeah. what yeah Wait, uh, we... no we didn't give him a standing no they just gave him a no tribute. sorry yeah yeah oh yeah which okay, i don't you... think i don't think it's like that bad like okay but it's but it's like how do you think when phil castle didn't get one because that's under the rules but like there's it, players who like i'd rather the, give ryan o'reilly phil... a, a video tribute yeah. over egg ball the fil- nah, but Pierre Engvall what? was like in the system for like Ryan O'Reilly was part of the Leafs only like w- a series win, in and so was years, Pierre right? Engvall. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He traded and, him. Oh shit! <laughs> he scored. Uh, but, and how many how many playoff goals did uh, did uh, Pierre Engvall score? Oh, uh, like zero. At zero. Right? Yeah, I was at zero say, in like nine games. A single one, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting way too passionate there is, about there Engvall is here a, like I'm really indifferent on him. But there's a serious gray area to what is. I don't. I think it's just like it's based up to the team. Like yeah. that. Yeah. That is how the team has been run over the past five years, six years now. I don't foresee yeah. them kind of reverting back to other ways. Yeah. This is I way too much pure Engvall talk. I think uh, we only give it to superstars unless there's a caveat. What is this caveat? Like uh, just they unreal a cup playoff exactly. like performers. They a, they, no, yeah, they, they just, win a cup with you, then you give it to they everybody. They win a cup. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, Brian, did you did you familiarize yourself with our our legal case here? I did, and I think that it's very very interesting and very important. To, uh, I knew Brian would find it. Like I I I'm very surprised he didn't know about this. I didn't hear it. Well, I haven't watched hockey in like three weeks. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. but that's anyway. that's one of those things that just like that's this more... permeated like all of Canada. Like I think it everyone... was on it was on CTV News, Brian. Yeah, if that gives you. I guess know. in Thunder Bay, there's not as much JT. Um, yeah, know. maybe Mar- maybe if it was Mar- uh, who's the yeah who's the um, who's the uh, it's the Stall brothers that are from Thunder yeah. Bay. Like if the Stall brothers got into CRA problem, yeah. you're just not CTV or Matt Thunder Murray Bay. or Matt yeah. Murray. That's right. It's, uh, so Brian, of, what? Yeah, a lot go. of Mark Shifley here and a lot of Kirill the Thrill over here. Oh, true. Okay. Uh, true. I I actually don't know anything about tax law unfortunately i would i love to speak about it but it's also <laughs> it's wouldn't it be smart for me to give tax advice when i don't yeah. have advice. i will say that yeah. i will also say this if it does not go in john Tavares's way that whole front-loaded thing that you guys do it's off uh, the table it's off the so table. okay guys, okay so brian you don't even have to answer me here i'm just going to talk about what i know about this which is not a lot at all let me let me say that right now 
Um, the way that I understand it is this is all about just the first year of his deal and the signing bonus in that first year. Um, and his argument is he should be taxed like 18% or whatever the lower percentage is versus the CRA, which has like a 30 something percentage that they were arguing. Yeah. And yeah. his argument is like, he was only in Canada, like for 45 days that year. And that money was in his New York bank. And so that's his case for the, as far as I understand it, which like I said, might not be a lot. Um, so like, it sounds like he has a decent case here. Like, I think you have to be pretty confident if you're willing to take the CRA to court, like you have to have a decent feeling that you can win this because 100%. yeah, you don't take the CRA to court on a whim. I don't, think, I'm not, so. I'm not taking the CRA to court <laughs> over like, you know, I don't know, a couple, yeah. like, you know, whatever. Yeah. A couple thousand. Yeah. But in this case, yeah. you know, the, okay. The end. Sorry, Ryan girl. To take, it, to take a government entity or someone to court, you need to ha- you need to truly believe you have a strong case, and you need to have fun yes. financial backing in order to do it. It also has to be almost Mr. Like, Tiberius like, is almost bulletproof, right? Like, yeah, you know, not al- the- not almost bulletproof. It's the idea that other people would also want to help him and fund him because it is in their best interest to protect their own yeah. tax rate. Right? Yes, so that's what I, I want to say too. Is like this is something that would affect future NHL players, past NHL players, anyone in the same situation as John Tavares has to be very interested in this because if Tavares has a case here, do we not see other players whose contracts already back. happened coming and saying, hey, you did that from John, how about me? So I think this is very interesting. I, I have a question. If you were a player that played that that played 10 years ago and you retired 10 years ago, do you still have grounds to go back at the CRA? Who that? Like, I, don't, I don't know. No. No, no. Once it's done, it's, yeah. it sets the common law yeah. from this point on. It has to. So, okay. okay. Let's let's end the conversation like this. Um, I look very forward to the Toronto Law and Order episode on John Tavares yeah. versus the CRA. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't know if you saw. I I want to say this is new, but we have. Law he knows. Order. He knows. Yeah. You have Pardon to me? know, Brian. Okay. Sorry. Finish, Dave. There is. There's a new series on. TV now. It's Law and Order Toronto. Okay. Did you know that? You did. You didn't know I, this. I didn't know. I don't watch. Law wow. And Order. No, but uh, I, like this has been announced like years ago, and there's someone in at least me and Brian's friend group that loves Law and Order so much that I would have uh, like assumed that you heard it. Anyways, no yeah, it's just coming out like right now. There's posters on the subway. Yeah, you get the commercials. Yeah. So, so yeah. what, what we're saying, I think by whenever the whenever the case wraps up, I say within. 12 months of that time frame, we are getting an episode <laughs> with with unnamed hockey player goes after the captain of Toronto's Kuzumer, hockey team. Is like going after, yeah. yeah. I'm so yeah, I'm I think that'll be a good episode, guys. That's all. Um <laughs> okay. I had some trade talk on our, our schedule there. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Uh Elliot Friedman on 32, not 32 thoughts. Why do I keep saying that? Saturday night headlines. He basically said the Leafs are willing to trade their first round pick. But they want to get bang for their buck. They don't want to do first round pick for rental. It needs to be more creative and more complicated than that. They're looking at things like, I don't know, getting a non-rental, getting two assets, not just one. So mixing and matching there, maybe having to add more to the first, but you get more back. And uh, my immediate thoughts is I like hearing that. I really, really do like hearing that. It shows me that Brad is willing to get creative here and i think we need some creativity if we're going to make some good trades this deadline um because yeah i'm not interested in in a first for tano i'm not to me the leaves have more assets than you would think they have to deal this deadline we're talking about that first to this year i don't think they're trading future first personally we're talking about a guy like nick robertson which whether you like think he's on the trade block or not he's an option we didn't think Rasmus Sandin was really on the trade block last year. Uh, and that leads to Timothy Lilligren. This is another guy. Just copy and paste what I just said about Robertson. Throw it on Lilligren. Uh, I think the mid-round picks are obviously in play. They're, they are for almost every team at every deadline. Uh, and then there's like our B-level prospects. It doesn't sound like Minton or Cowan are available. But basically any other name. And maybe not Hildeby. Because I wouldn't see them doing that. Every other name under the sun should be available. I think the Leafs have way more to work with than people are giving them credit for. And I think, and this is what Elliot said last night, we're looking for at least a couple defensemen and maybe a center. 
that's a lot to try and get back. But like I said, I think they can actually do it. And I'm going to be exploring that. You might get that in article form. You might get it in podcast form next week when I give you guys some ideas for how they can do that. Um, one thing to note as well, the we know that the Leafs – Taught, were in active discussion with Calgary over getting both Nikita Zadorov and Chris Tanev, which means that this yes. must have taken place early in the season, October, November. So I think Zadorov got traded in like early December. I think it probably happened right after Zadorov said, trade me, Calgary. Yeah. Well, probably pretty, that's what yeah, happened. Pretty close <laughs> after that. Yeah, 100%. So now Calgary's thing was like the Leafs were willing to try to get both done with just that. It was like that first plus maybe another thing. And Calgary's like, why yeah. would we do that if we could p- package together two separate deals? And instead of acquiring three assets, we could acquire five, which makes sense. They're, they were totally right to do that. 100%. Like, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Does that maybe spur some decisions? Maybe, maybe as like, maybe these are deals that just happen later as the deadline comes like when the when the when the days become hours and the hours become minutes maybe there's more of an onus on the selling teams to try to just get back whatever they can and maybe that that way of thinking of trying to squeeze as much blood as you can starts to or sorry trying to get more assets starts to turn into can we just squeeze and like a little bit more you know so we'll see uh who who are some names that are on, on our list right now, Christian? So, like, preliminary, because like I said, I want to give some very deep thought in this. And I want to make sure the cap actually works. That's always the biggest thing. It's really easy to yeah. throw out names, but there's no point of throwing out a name if there's no way to make it work under your team's cap. Um, so I've looked at, like, Scott Laud in that center, who's making $3 million for the next three years. He's not having a good season, but he's someone who I've liked before. The Leafs have liked before. More, more Kyle Dubas, so... Maybe that takes us out of it. Maybe Brad's not as interested, but he's a guy. Um, I've already talked, I think, about like Sean Walker on defense. I think Chris Tanev is a lot lower on my list. And I think he's starting to get lower on a lot of these fans' lists, um, especially when you consider like he might be willing to sign here in free agency. You you can have that battle in the summer then instead of at the trade deadline to try and get him. Um, outside of that, yeah, like I don't have too many names because I want to look at guys who aren't rentals. And those aren't guys who we have heard much in the trade talks, right? Like Casey Middlestad was a new one because we you don't expect him because he's not a a rental. I'll be I'll be honest, yeah. with you, that came that came out of left field for me when I, when exactly. I heard Middlestad's name yeah. coming up. And there's yeah. there's uh, over the next couple of week, weeks, there's probably there's definitely going to be there are always more names. There's going to be yeah. definitely a lot more names that we're not we're not even thinking about right now where we're like, hmm, maybe that yeah. is the fit. The the fit was. Yeah right there the whole time right right under our noses right that's what i was gonna say is middle stat we never thought of it and then when you hear it and you look at the roster you say huh that makes sense Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna try and look for those names before we get the 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 report that makes us say huh that makes sense so yeah just give a get to many names any anything you just want so do you have do you have anything on scott lawton and brian do you have any thoughts at all on scott lawton because i'm a big scott lawton guy I, I do. I, uh, I think he's a great player, and I think he's having a career year. I also do have a list of uh, cap-friendly trades. I just want to get your opinions if you guys are ready oh, for God. that. I'm always okay. ready. I'm always ready. Do, I know I, do, you know I live for this. Let's let's limit this, Christian, to yes or no. Just absolutely okay. yes yeah, or sure. absolutely no. No sure. middle ground here. I'm but Okay, I'm going to give you yes and no maybe from both teams, though. Okay. 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 From okay. the least perspective first, but I just as reference. Okay, let's hear what we got. I got speaking of Scott Lawton, the first one I have on my list, Scott Lawton for a first in twenty the twenty twenty four first. Just one for one. Straight up. Um uh, well I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna go yes. Considering he has two years, yes, yes. I'm going okay. yes. Yeah. Interesting. Scott I, I think Philly has, would say yes. I think so too, and Scott Lawton currently has I think 21 points in 40 something games. It's not it's not the greatest. He's uh, honest, yeah, it's not the kind greatest. Of, it's kind of fallen off him. On on counting yeah. stats wise, yeah. You're not getting but you're not getting him for his counting stats. No, no. No. I got Mark Andre Fleury for Noah Gregor, Ilya Samsonov, and a boatload of picks. Why the hell is like Noah Gregor in this? No. Uh, no. 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 I'm I'm very confident. Sam, Samsonov's been playing 
pretty wild recently. The difference between Sammy and Flurry, like I don't know if there's much there. Like I know it's Flurry, but yeah, yeah. The, the, I, the, the I'm not pedigree. making. Yeah. I don't. I don't need a goalie this deadline. I don't. Yeah. I don't think we do either. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Christopher Tanev, in exchange for David Kahn, Timothy Bilirgin, and your first. No. Hell no. And also, I like, okay, no, like Calgary's saying yes, but they also don't need David Kemp. Like, that's they just don't. a weird, like, that's not, yeah, it's not yeah. what they, uh, Fred Conrad's not getting on the phone and saying, Brad, I really want David Kemp. I, I heard not. you almost say Kevin there, Christian. Let, I, I let had to, say. I'm telling you, I had to pause. I'm like, because now I go through my head, I'm like, is it correct? Is it yeah. Kevin? Which is the wrong one? Which is the yeah. right one? Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. It just it makes sense. You guys. It just it yeah. makes sense, dude. Okay. Yeah. Nicholas Robertson for Jordan Greenway, one for one. Uh, you know what? So I actually did start looking at Jordan Greenway. Um, his numbers aren't very good. I, I'm i going to say no, but I, like, I'd still, like, Jordan Greenway you is you intriguing. Yeah, Jordan uh, Greenway is intriguing, and Nick Robertson is intriguing, but I don't know if I'm, I'd do like a third for Greenway. It's like how I'm, I would do it. I think I'm Nick saying, Robertson goes in a different deal. I'm saying no question mark. You know what I mean? Like, no? No, but yeah. maybe change it a bit. Yeah, I, yeah, so. I, I think wherever Nick Rob, my opinion though on Nick Robertson is wherever he goes, he'll be a 25 goal scorer. So, and he's going to come back Send and him west. haunt our ass. Yeah. yeah, that's why I do not put him in Buffalo. Okay, yeah. so okay, very very quick aside conversation here. The very the two like very obvious connections for like Nick Robertson. There's very two obvious ones. Like it doesn't take much thinking here. What's the first team that makes Dallas. sense for Nick Robertson? Yeah, so there's Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, but they don't really need him. Like that's just for the brotherly. That was just vibes. Literally, yeah. it. just yeah, for vibes. vibes straight. So I, I that's probably not happening. Uh, and the other team, very obvious okay. connection again, LA. He's from there, like. Yeah, like, I mean, Man, I don't know. Imagine him on a line with Trevor Moore again. That's what I'm saying. You get the Cali boys from Toronto. Like, you could do that. Um, wow. Once again, though, I don't really think they need or want Nick Robertson personally. So I mean, dude, right now they could they could do whatever. Like, they could use whatever they want. They've been pretty poor recently. So. Yeah, that's true. They, they're well, actually like, the ones that need a goalie. Send Zim I, Mark Andre Fleury there. Yeah. I got, the one I got team that we have heard for Nick Robertson was Philly. Like that apparently Philly is big fans of Nick Robertson. So maybe maybe, maybe bigger deal involving a first in Nick Robertson for Lawton if, and if Lawton and Walker, Walker come over. Right. Now yeah, we're talking. I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm maybe listening. foreshadowing to one of my trades. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I got two more. Okay. Adam Larson for well, Adam Larson goes to Toronto in exchange for Connor Tibbins and your first. Yes. Oh, oh wait, I do that in a first? heartbeat. Yeah, I do. No, I do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, but also, yeah. Seattle's not doing that. Um, I think the Seattle defenseman to watch for, and he hasn't been in trade rooms yet. Is he? Jamie Jamie Alexiak. Jamie Alexiak. So, I think yeah. that could make sense. Jamie Alexiak. Big, okay. big, big boy yeah. right there. Big lad from Toronto. The last trade. Guy. Okay. The last trade I have is including Washington. It's uh. Yeah. Kind of a bad trade, but it's the only one that involves like both teams together. So I'll put them in. Joel That's Edmondson true. and back Malinsky go to Toronto for Timmy Hillary Good. Yeah, no thanks. No. See you later. Bye. Ciao. No, thank you. <laughs> as soon as you said Joel Edmondson and, and after we just talked about him being not not on anybody's list, no. Oh, Brian, where, can you, where can you get a Beck Malenstein jersey, Brian? NHL shout out to Fubo and shout out to Razor. Well, I'm not there, I'm not there. 